Hi everyone, I am introducing you to today's topic with this picture. During the COVID-19 pandemic, all the people coming from outside country, outside state, were done temperature screening. So, today's topic is screening of a disease. Screening is defined as the search for unrecognized disease or defect in apparently healthy individuals by means of rapidly applied tests, examinations or other procedures. So the key words are healthy individuals, unrecognized disease and rapidly applied tests. Why are we doing the screening? There is a phenomenon known as iceberg phenomenon of disease. In this picture, you can see the tip of the iceberg, which is above the sea level, is only visible. And this represents the clinical cases which comes to the doctors in hospitals. A large submerged portion is below the sea level. And it represents the hidden cases in the community, which include undiagnosed cases, carriers, subclinical cases. So we are doing the screening to find out the hidden cases in the community. And the cases in the community represents the prevalence of the disease in the community. Only those with signs and symptoms comes to the hospital to visit the doctors. Now coming to the natural history of disease. First, there is onset of the disease. After few time period, the symptom appears. So the time period between the biological onset of disease and the appearance of symptoms is preclinical phase. After the symptom appearance, diagnosis occurs at some point and then after that the treatment starts. The period between the diagnosis and start of treatment is clinical phase. Now let us see the levels of prevention. Primary prevention is before the onset of the disease <clears throat> and it includes health promotion and specific protection. Secondary prevention is after the onset of the disease. but before the symptom appears. So, early diagnosis and treatment comes in secondary prevention. Screening is included in the secondary prevention. Screening for early diagnosis. And tertiary prevention is done after the complication occurs which includes rehabilitation and disability limitation. And when do we expect a potential improvement by screening? You can see in this picture from the period of screening till the treatment starts. During this phase we get the potential improvement by screening. You can see in this flowchart that apparently healthy people undergo screening and we get two sets of people, those who probably have disease and those who probably do not have the disease. Screening is never confirmatory. We have to do the diagnostic test to confirm the disease. So those who probably have the disease will be made to do the diagnostic test and they will be divided into diseased and not diseased. The diseased are those who have confirmatory diagnostic test. Now the not diseased and the probably do not have disease who are screening negative should undergo periodic screening according to the disease, maybe yearly or six monthly. Coming to the differences between screening test and diagnostic test. Screening test is done in apparently healthy individuals. 
whereas diagnostic test is done in those with indications signs symptoms screening test is applied to large group of people as in non communicable disease camps diagnostic test is done in single patients who come to the hospital with a complaint in screening test the results are arbitrary and final which means that once a person is screening test positive he will be not considered disease positive he will be offered a chance to do a diagnostic test to confirm the disease and when he is positive the result will be not modified according to any doubts it is final it is screening test positive whereas in diagnostic test it is not final and it will be modified based on newer findings from different tests in screening test there is only one cut off point if someone crosses the cut off point he is screened test positive and if someone does not cross it he is screening test negative but in diagnostic test it is based on evaluation of history clinical findings lab findings and all findings together will reach a diagnosis screening test is less accurate diagnostic test is more accurate screening test is cheaper diagnostic test is more expensive screening test is never used as a basis for treatment we have to confirm with a diagnostic test and the diagnostic test forms the basis for treatment the initiative for screening comes from the investigator or agency providing care the initiative for diagnostic test comes from the patient who is having a complaint or symptom now there is a concept of lead time you can see that at a point there is disease onset then there is a first possible point of diagnosis then there is final critical diagnosis and then there is usual time of diagnosis so at the first possible time onwards till the critical diagnosis this time period is the screening time even if we don't diagnose the disease after some period of time the signs and symptoms develop in the patient and he will be diagnosed that is the usual time of diagnosis so the period between the first possible point to the usual time of diagnosis is the lead time lead time is an advantage gained by screening now we can see that if the disease follows the natural course of events the outcome is a but if it is detected by screening the outcome will be b so b is the advantage gained by the early detection by screening and b minus a is the benefit by a screening program now the uses of screening first one is case detection this is called prescriptive screening which is done for patient's own benefit it will find the disease in the patient and allows for early detection of the disease the second use is control of a disease prospective screening people are screened for the benefit of others so in case of infectious diseases a large number of people will be screened those who have symptoms those who do not have symptoms all are screened and this is done to control the disease you have seen during the covid pandemic firstly uh, those who came from outside the country were screened then those who came from outside state were also screened then symptomatics were screened those who were contact of positive cases were screened all these were uh, done very vigorously to control the covid 19 an infectious disease the third use of screening is research in some chronic diseases uh, the 
natural history of the disease is not fully clear so to fill the gaps we can use screening then fourth use is screening can be used for health education to raise the public awareness about a disease now the types of screening are mass screening high risk or selective screening multiphasic screening coming to mass screening as the name implies it is a screening of the whole population irrespective of the risk of contracting the disease example in school children they can be screened for visual defects whether they have any symptom or not but if we do not have a suitable treatment after getting screening test positive the mass screening is not useful so always we have to use mass screening for some disease which have a suitable treatment now coming to high risk screening as the name implies it is a screening of selected high risk groups in the population example screening for hiv in high risk groups like sex workers iv drug abusers high risk screening is effective and economical use of resources because we are doing in the high risk group we have a higher chance of getting test positive Multi-phase screening. Two or more screening tests are done in a combination to a large number of people at the same time. For example, blood test, urine test, ECG, X-ray, other imaging like that. They are all done at the same time. Now coming to the criteria for screening. There are criteria for the disease to be screened. and also there are criteria for the screening test the criteria for screening test include acceptability repeatability validity yield simplicity safety rapidity ease of administration and cost now we have the criteria for disease to be screened for easy learning we can remember like this in the for a course of natural history of disease first there will be an asymptomatic stage then there is onset of signs and symptoms when the disease will be diagnosed then there will be a treatment then there will be morbidity and mortality like that so the first point is the disease should be highly prevalent in the community then only it will be useful to the community we can pick up more cases earlier then the disease should have an early asymptomatic stage or recognizable latent stage it would be very useful if we do the screening test in the early asymptomatic stage and detect the disease before the symptoms appear then the natural history of the disease should be known suppose we know uh, the usual natural course of event and how the outcome is occurring the outcome is uh, very far away from the signs and symptoms then the screening test will be very useful suppose some disease <coughs> we can detect only very close to the outcome like if the outcome is death and all then the screening test is never useful the test has to detect the disease prior to the onset of signs and symptoms then after screening test we have to confirm the diagnosis by another test so there should be facilities to confirm diagnosis there should be an effective treatment if a screening test detects a disease and there is no treatment for that disease it is not good there should be an agreed on policy concerning whom to treat as patient we should be very clear and not doubtful on whom to treat as patients then there should be evidence that early detection and treatment reduces morbidity and mortality if we are detecting the disease earlier and still the mortality is the same there is no change then the screening test is not useful and then the expected benefits should be always greater than the risk and cost of the screening 
coming to the criteria for screening test first one is acceptability the patient should be cooperative to the screening test and also it should be acceptable to the population their culture second one is repeatability or reliability or precision or reproducibility so when we repeat the test more than once it should give the same results almost similar results in the same individual under the same conditions so it can be defined as the test must give consistent results when repeated more than once on the same individual or material under the same conditions it depends on three major factors first one is observer variation suppose one doctor measures bp he gets a value another doctor measures a bp and he will get a value both this value should be almost similar if they are they getting far apart values then it will affect the reliability then biological variation this include physiological variations suppose measuring bp by a doctor on a patient in sitting position lying down position standing position all these position will have different bps then errors related to technical methods like faulty instrument calibration errors these all are technical errors the third one is validity or accuracy validity means how much a tested value is close to the truth or actual value the term validity refers to what extent the test accurately measures which it purports to measure it is the ability of a test to distinguish those who have the disease and those who do not have the disease the two important components of validity are sensitivity and specificity in this figure you can see that in figure a all the dots are far apart from the center the center is the truth or actual value all dots are far apart from the center so it is not valid but and all the dots are far apart from each other and it is not reliable also or repeatable the figure b we can see that the dots are close to the truth value so it is more valid but uh, each dots are far apart it is not reliable in the figure c we can see that all the dots are far from the center value but close together so it is reliable but not valid and the final one it is both reliable and valid the fourth point is yield yield is the amount of previously unrecognized disease that is diagnosed as a result of screening effort the screening help to identify the unrecognized disease the yield depends on factors like sensitivity specificity then prevalence of the disease if there is a disease which is highly in prevalent in the community we can detect more number of people with a screening test then community participation if we are keeping a screening test and the community is uh, reluctant to participate in it we may not get uh, many positive results from the screening test so community participation is very important then availability of medical care suppose we are giving all the screening test positives some medical care some treatment or uh, diagnostic test is provided to them uh, they will be coming for doing the screening test or to attend the screening program evaluation of a screening test we can draw a 2 into table on the row side we have the screening test result positive and negative on the column we have the gold standard test that is surgical biopsy for cancer we can divide into disease positive and disease negative in the column a we have the true positive who have the disease as well as screening test positive the column b we have false positive who do not have the disease but the screening test is positive the column c we have 
those who have the disease but the screening test is negative for them they are false negative and in the column d we have true negative who do not have the disease and also who is screening test negative what is sensitivity sensitivity is how many people are screening test positive among the total diseased it is defined as the proportion of the deceased people who were correctly identified as positive by the screening test so the formula is true positive by total deceased that is true positive by true positive plus false negative this is equal to a by a plus c into 100 like that so sensitivity is the characteristic of the screening test specificity specificity means the number of screening test negative among the total non diseased it is defined as the proportion of non diseased people who are correctly identified as negative by the screening test the formula is true negative by total non diseased into 100 this is equal to true negative by true negative plus false positive into 100 and from the table it is d by d plus b into 100 now i'll tell a simple acronym spin and snout now spin means specific test positive rules in disease that means if we are having a highly specific test and we got it as positive then we have the disease we are surely having the disease and snout means sensitive test negative rules out the disease suppose we are doing a sensitive test and we got it as negative then we are sure that we are not having the disease but if it is positive we have to again do the confirmatory test whereas in specific test if we are negative it doesn't mean that we are negative we have to confirm we are negative with some other test positive predictive value it is the number of disease positive among the total screening test positive the predictive value of a positive test indicates the probability that a patient with positive test result has in fact the disease in question positive predictive value formula is true positive by total screening test positive into 100 true positive by true positive plus false positive into 100 this is equal to a by a plus b into 100 from the table next we have the negative predictive value negative predictive value means the non diseased among the total screening test negative persons so it indicates the probability that a patient with a negative test result doesn't have the disease in question formula is true negative by total screening test negative true negative by true negative plus false negative into 100 this is equal to d by d plus c into 100 so the sensitivity and specificity were the inherent characteristic of the screening test whereas positive predictive value and negative predictive value they are inherent characteristic of the disease or the prevalence of the disease percentage of false positives this is the number of false positive among the non diseased formula is false positive by false positive plus true negative into 100 is defined as the patients who do not have the disease are told that they have the disease percentage of false negatives it means that 
number of false negatives among deceased so the patients are actually having the disease but are told that they do not have the disease the formula is false negative by true positive plus false negative into 100 which is c by a plus c into 100 from the table now let us see where to draw the cut off points of a screening test here you can see in the figure there are diabetics and non diabetics in two columns and the blood sugar level high low are noted there are 20 diabetics and 20 non diabetics now if we are drawing the cut off point near the high blood sugar value we can see that there are five diabetics and two non diabetics and by drawing the 2 into 2 table we get sensitivity as 25 percentage and specificity as 90 percentage now when we draw the cut off point at a lower level we can see that there are 17 diabetics and 14 non diabetics here the sensitivity is 85 percentage which is higher than the previous and specificity is 30 percentage which is lower than the previous but in the real life there is no partition between diabetics and non diabetics and there is no color difference between diabetics and non diabetics all group are mixed so a screening test using a high cut off point high cut off point then many people we will, many people will be normal and only seven are identified as diabetics and if we are using a screening test with a low cut off point this will result in more number of people as having diabetes 31 people are having diabetes so if a disease is highly prevalent we have to set a, a low cut off point so that we can identify more number of people with the disease and if the disease is lethal then also we have to set low cut off point so that we diagnose the disease earlier and the treatment can be initiated we come to the end of the screening of a disease please practice some problems and make your concept clear thank you